Hello everyone. So um, as Danny just spoke, that the demo today is to show how to streamline the uh, Phoenix workflows with Satara's integral data repository. So before we start the demo, I would like to take some time to introduce um, the um, integral. So that is a um, Satara's um, data repository. So as we know that as clinical trials become more complex with large uh, volumes of data, it's difficult to ensure the accuracy of your data and remain 21 CFR Part 11 compliant um, for regulatory submissions without a centralized data repository. So Integral is a uh, cloud-based uh, SaaS hosted uh, validated 21 CFR Part 11 um, compliant data and model repository. It has intuitive users interface for collecting, managing, uh, sharing, and storing multiple types of data sets for analysis. Uh, Integral is agnostic to the analytical, analytical tools that usually um, the scientists use, say for example, Phoenix, SAS, R, Python, or Piranha, or Numan, or Winolin. So this means that you can con connect capture, visualize, and analyze data anytime, anywhere, while ensuring compliance guidance um, guidelines are met. Okay, can we get to the next slide, please? Okay, so uh, what is the benefits of using Integral? Um, Integral um, is a, a one centralized repository, provides data integrity across your analyses. So it ensures all data is up to date and um, um, help to, it also helps to make data-driven informed decisions. And it uh, can improve the PK biostatistics and clinical operational workflows. So uh, Integral is accessible through the Phoenix platform and um, other um, technology agnostic, say for example, SAS or Python uh, via the client application. There's a third application that people can access Integral, which is the web application, uh, which is usually used by the people uh, by the user who doesn't need to do analysis but just to do the data management. It also enables quick search and visualization of data, and uh, it, it adheres and transforms CDS data standards into searchable content. Integral can also facilitate greater internal and third-party collaboration. So with uh, using of Integral, user would not need to um, use the SFTP uh, sites and email data exchanges with uh, the vendors. So uh, in, by assigning the users with different roles and permissions in Integral, that you can seamlessly share and report data uh, with your partner CROs or um, other um, partner labs or um, collaborators without the need for a VPN. Um, and also Integral ensures analysis reprodu reproducibility by saving a complete analysis package as a save point in the um, data repository. The audit trails uh, is also created on demand for files um, and um, then this shows the who, when, why, and what for the content history. Um, and also, can we move to the next slide, please? Okay, and some other um, key differentiator capabilities also include that um, um, these uh, 21 CFR Part 11, Part 11 compliant cloud-based SaaS, and it is built in uh, Amazon Web Services. So it enables multiple um, modes for our um, users can choose. And also it has a bolt-on compliance solution to your existing computing environments. Um, the direct URL access allows the user to um, have direct access to the repository uh, with the client application. And um, it also um, has the authentication through Okta, allows for the single sign-on. Um, the second one is the role-based access. So Integral has different license type that uh, the user can choose from, and then it also um, provides the different permission groups that um, both pre-configured by the system and also can be configured by the customers. 
and integral is highly flexible so um, it has the automated uh, uh, folder structure to harmonize the storage and workflow and uh, it, it can uh, user can choose to configure the metadata or the properties for the folder structures as well to facilitate searching and access control so uh, in integral that archiving you can do the archiving directly in the working environments next please and uh, for the compliant part, that uh, integral has an audit trail, and then uh, the audit trail is uh, based on the uh, is based on the demands um, based. Then it can provide a chain of custody for data origin, and it also provides an e-signature um, that uh, when the user needs to make any updates to the data repository. Also, integral provides version control, traceability, and auditability of data. So uh, the dependencies in integral is a new concept that we have. So it is um, that the source data, when we have the source data, and then we have um, uh, analysis that using the source data, we call the source data a dependency. So this, we, we, will, we have the system notifications of changes to data or programs upon uh, which analysis depend on. And the linked copies also uh, can get a, a notifications when the dependency is broken. Um, Integral also um, is a centralized data repository. That means it has single source of truth. Um, it simplifies the management of reusable code. And the QC or review process is also facilitated by file viewing, editing, and comparison in the repository. Um, some other um, uh, capabilities of Integral also include the compatibility. It can work with both cloud-based and on-premise computing environments. It supports all modern operating system, um, and it is agnostic to the analytical software being used. Uh, it, it also has some um, benefits benefits that uh, Integral is validated by Satara and all the updates are based on the, the user's feedback. Then we provide the maintenance, support, professional training program, and 24-5 help desk. So it, Integral has a rapid, very rapid deployment. Integral can be in implemented within a month. For the collaboration-wise, uh, the system APIs and uh, Satara services group supports uh, the custom integrations. It also eliminates the need for SFTP sites and email data exchanges with vendors, provide, providing a collaborative working environment with internal and external partners without VPN. So uh, this slide uh, basically represents a um, diagram of how Integral works. Uh, starting at the bottom right, this is the user's workstation um, that the computer that the user uh, usually use. And uh, the user will connect as they uh, normally do um, on their com computation environment. Um, it can be Phoenix, it can be Piranha, or it can be SAS or Python or some other um, analytical tool. And then the user installs integrate, uh, integral client application to um, mediate the transfer of information between our AWS cloud and the computing environment that they are using. And um, this allows you to move and synchronize data back and forth. You can also connect directly to integral data repository through any web web-based or browser, um, say for example, Google Chrome or Firefox. So uh, for the next part uh, that we are going to the demo mode. Okay, so now what you're seeing is the uh, login page for Integral. So I enter my username and password, and then now I'm inside Integral. Okay, so um, inside Integral, this is the user interface that you will um, choose, you will be able to see once you have logged in. And then this is one of the access that I just mentioned. This is web-based uh, access. And then Michael um, later will show you a, the access through the Phoenix platform. So on the upper left, you will see a uh, menu options so that you will have this home page. When you click on it, it will bring you back to this um, page. And then the search function. So this is for search of the text uh, files. 
And then we have this uh, security module. This is to the module uh, only uh, allows admin users to access. And this is where uh, the admin users for Integral can um, configure the security permissions and the user's licenses and roles. And this compare um, button is for the users to compare um, the same uh, text files, but the, the different versions. And the copy link is the uh, module uh, where it allows the user to uh, do a copy or link to copy for a uh, source file. And the administration module is also a uh, module that only allows admin users to access. So this is where you can configure the structure of integral um, to, con uh, to configure the metadata or properties of the folder types. And also at the bottom that we will see some useful links like the support, uh, click on it, you will go to um, the website where you can find uh, the Satara support team for, for your questions. And the help button is, um, is to get you to the link where that you can find a lot of useful information, say for example, the user's guide or the release notes. Okay, so when we come back to this uh, main um, interface that we, we see that um, on the left-hand side, we see a, uh, the folder browser. So based on your permissions, you will be able to see um, the, the, the folders that you have access to, <coughs> excuse me. And then, so for here, I, I am like the super user in Integral, so I have both admin um, license and the, uh, the full license users license. So I'm able to see all the folders and I have full access to the folders. And then this is the refresh button that you can refresh to get the most recent updates. And then uh, this is a filter that you can use to uh, search for your root folders. So these folders we call root folders. Usually each root folder represents a uh, study. And then there's several ways they can quickly find your folder. So like the favorites, you can choose to save your folder to your favorite list. So once you click on it, you will find um, the, the, your, your folder in that list. And then this is a quick filter. So you can type the word of the root folder's name or some or partial name of the root folder's name. You will be able to quickly find your um, folder. So here, um, if I click on the heart, and then I will see that this is um, the folder that I have on my favorite list. And then I click to open. This is a system configured folder structure. It has data, experiments, and library as subfolders. Data usually is a place where we store the source data. And experiments uh, refers to the, uh, the analysis that we um, run uh, with, by using these source data. So now you see that I have two experiments stored underneath. And then the library folder is usually used to store um, the study protocol or um, any references that you want to have in here. So now, uh, so if we, if I want to start a, um, a, a workflow or a new study in Integral, so I need to click on this plus button in here to add a folder. So when I click on it, I have the option to choose the folder type. And then for today's um, uh, demo that I will just to choose the study. So this is a system configured folder type, and then I need to give it a name. So I will give uh, the name with demo and today's date. So that's a name that I give to uh, this folder. And I also have other metadata or properties that I can fill up, but these uh, fields, they do not have the, the yellow star on them. So that means they're they are not required. And then, but this can be configured in the admin module as well. So um, now I have complete, uh, I have completed um, creating a new folder. So now I'm going to show you how to configure a user's permission uh, for this folder. Uh, so if I, let me first add that uh, folder to my favorite list. So it's easier for me to find later. And okay. So I click on the ellipsis menu next to the root folder, and then I click on uh, choose one of the, um, the options from the drop down menu at your favorites. So now this folder is in my favorite list. So now as a admin user, I have access to the security uh, module and I go to the security module. And then this is, I mean, we, I mean this individual user mode, and then I need to find Michael because I need to 
grant him permissions to the folder that I just created. I just type partial um, uh, name of Michael's name, and then I bounce like Michael has been assigned as a full licensed user. So that means the license that Michael is holding is a full licensed user's um, license. And then if I go to the group membership, that I see Michael does not belong to any um, groups in here. So that means Michael doesn't have any permissions to any folders yet. And then the same with the folder permission, we see that we don't have anything checked in here. So Michael currently does not have any permissions. But um, in order to finish um, our study, I need to assign Michael with uh, the permissions to the folder that I just created so that he can start his analysis. So first, Michael needs to be able to see this study, so he needs to have the read permission. Cindy, uh, you would need to do the uh, June 23rd folder. That's oh, the older folder. Yeah. Wait, that's the wrong one. Sorry about that. Yeah, okay, so um, this is the folder that I just created. And then, so Michael needs to have the read uh, permission to the root folder, and um, Michael needs to upload the data and he also needs to be able to edit the data, but I don't want him to delete any data, so I don't check the de delete permission in here. And for documents, which is a, a library folder in my folder structure, and then I have some reference data in there, so I want him to, uh, to be able to read that reference um, paper. So I check read permissions in here. And the corresponding uh, folder, um, to the analysis security context is called um, experiments. So Michael needs to be able to add experiments, run analysis, and um, updates, uh, update that analysis when necessary. So I also check the create, read, and edit to Michael. Okay, so um, I am done with the uh, folder creation and the permission um, then I have granted all the permissions to Michael that he now should have um, enough permissions to run his analysis. So, Dan, if you can switch the screen to Michael's. Okay, great. All right, so um, once again, my name is Michael Clifton, uh, and I'll be demonstrating um, what, say, a typical PK scientist might uh, use Integral and Phoenix for, which would be, uh, I'll demonstrate just performing a uh, regular um, PK analysis using the NCA model. So uh, you can see here we have an integral plugin for Phoenix and it's uh, displayed here. When you click on it, you have these four menu options. I'm going to click on the browser, which I have on the other screen right now. Let me just drag that over. but. So when you click on this, this browser will appear and, uh, and it looks just like what Cindy showed you in the Chrome browser. But it's gonna, um, it'll have uh, some additional uh, menu options since we're uh, working in Phoenix and I'll, I'll demonstrate that next. But first, let me log in. Okay, and you can see here with uh, what, uh, when Cindy added my permissions, uh, I only have access to uh, these certain folders. Uh, and here's the folder that Cindy created. Uh, so uh, I'll demonstrate, uh, say, uh, for instance, uh, the PK scientists received a final data from their lab, concentration time data. And I need to uh, use that data for my analysis. So first I'm gonna upload it to Integral. I'm gonna click on the data folder, click on the ellipsis menu, and there's an option here to upload files. When I click on this, uh, this window appears where if you have a window on a separate screen with the files you want ready to go, you can just drag and drop those into this. Or if you want, you can just click into this box and it'll open up your folders, just like a typical uh, Windows browser. Uh, so you can see here, I, um, I'm gonna choose the Clayton CSV file for my source. So I'm gonna select that, click upload. And this is where you'll have to enter a reason and sign uh, and do the electronic signature. So I'll add my reason or final analysis. I'll sign. Uh, 
Okay, and as you can see here, uh, the file that I uploaded appears in the data folder and it comes with uh, specific properties. Um, here's a history file showing, you know, this is the first revision of this file and here's the reason um, for, for why I uploaded the file um, as well as uh, the properties associated with the file and whether those change or not. And I'll also show you there's a contents tab here which will display your uh, the data in your files. This is um, specifically works for CSV and text files, but you can see here it, sh it shows the, the header and units uh, for the data I just uploaded. So now I want to create an analysis using this data. As Cindy mentioned, this would be my dependency file. So to create my uh, experiment, I'll click on experiments. I'll click on the ellipsis menu and Actually, I'm sorry, let me close this out and open it back up again. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh. Okay, so we'll click on experiments. <coughs> Excuse me. And you'll see there's a menu option here called add experiment. I'll click on this. And uh, here we have a window, <coughs> excuse me, I'm a tickle in my throat. Uh, this is where I will add a name for my experiment. Test, and I'll add today's date. As you can see here, uh, this also comes with uh, some properties you can add. So say, uh, uh, you know, for this analysis, this has to do with PK. So I'll just add PK here and I can, you know, just add any text, test type. Uh, and then underneath here, this is where you'll be able to select your dependency or source file. So as you can see here, uh, the Clayton file is available. So I'll click on that and then I'll hit submit. And now you can see it working with Phoenix where it's creating this project file. And at the same time, it's importing the data I selected for the dependency. So I'll go ahead and import that in. Okay. So now uh, minimize the browser and you can see here, now we have this uh, project file. Uh, that has my source data and the uh, name of the experiment. And there's a difference between this project file and one you would normally create in the uh, in Phoenix. I'll just uh, do a quick example of that. If I click on new project here, you'll see uh, there's a difference in the symbol here for the new project here and here. This Phoenix symbol here shows you that this project is connected to Interval. So close that. And so now I'll do a quick uh, NCA analysis of this file. <clears throat> Go ahead and set my uh, settings and run this NCA. Okay, so my analysis is complete. And now I wanna save these results back to integral. So if you go back to the integral menu up here, you see there's an option here called save. I'll click on save and we'll be given a window that uh, uh, displays the, uh, this experiment's uh, properties. And then there's a save option tab here where this is where we can tell integral which results we want imported in the integral from our analysis. So I'm just gonna pick a couple of these. So say we want the core output, I'm gonna call it PK output text. And I wanna 
my results. I want the regular file as well as the PK parameters pivoted. And this one, so you can see here what I've been doing. I can also select which format I would like this, the file imported as. So for this one, I imported it as a, a comma delimited text file. For this one, excuse <coughs> me, I imported it as an Excel file. And then for uh, this file, I'm importing it as a text. So I'll also just um, show you, you can also import plots. So here's the Lambda Z plots. So I'll import these as well as JPEGs. So once you have all of this set up, and if you want, there's also a tab here called dependencies, and this will show you what your uh, source file was for this analysis. Once all of that's done, you'll click on the next arrow and then click finish. And then you'll add a reason. Completed analysis. Sign. So you can hear, see here it's uh, saving the results. This might take just a little bit of time, but um, okay, you can say it, it made it to 100%. So now I'll go back to the browser. I'll click refresh. And you can see here under experiments, I saved my results. And you can see here are are all the results that I imported from my analysis. So you see all, there's all those lambda, <clears throat> lambda Z plots, the Phoenix project file that we used for the analysis, and the rest of the results. And I'll just uh, show you um, when it comes to, and this is what's called a save point. A save point captures all of these results in one package. So you can see here, if we go to the history tab here, there's a, a section here called save points and if I click on this it'll show you what dependencies were used for the analysis the Clayton file and then also uh, a list of all the files you uh, imported from the analysis so now the next thing I'm going to demonstrate excuse me I'm going to demonstrate the scenario where Say um, you got notification from your lab that there was a mistake and they had to you know, update the results. So they send you a new data set with updated results. In those instances, what we'll need to do is upload a new revision of your file. And if you go to the menu option here, you'll see there's an option called upload new revision. I'll click on that and i'll uh, click on the window here and i'll upload this clayton version 2 file i have ready to go so i'll upload that and you'll get this warning message saying uh, you know are you sure you want to upload the file as a new revision and i'll say okay and then uh add my reason Sign. Okay, so you can see here now, because I updated this file, now it's revision two, and it has my, my reason for that. And if we want, we can also, if you, if you want to, you can also compare this file from revision one to revision two in the uh, compare module up here. But for now, I'm just going to refresh. So I've updated the file, but look what happened. I updated the dependency and now my folder is red. So why is the folder red? If you uh, go down further into and look to see which folders are red, 
<clears throat> you'll see that my previous experiment is now out of date because I updated the source data. And if you click on the history file here, you can see it, the state it says out of date. So what we need to do now is update uh, the data uh, in our experiment. So actually what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to, I'm gonna close this out. I'm gonna, this is the older project. I'm gonna save that, but I wanna close it so I can show you. So say you go back later on when you have Phoenix open and you realize, oh, I need to update this experiment. So I'll click on the experiment and there's an option here called load experiment. So this will load the experiment into Phoenix. So when I do this, you should get a warning message that says your experiment is out of date and it asks you if you wanna get the latest version of your source file. So I'll click yes. And you can see here, it re-imports the new version of uh, your source. So I'll go ahead and do that. Go back to Phoenix. You can see here now, I have the new data set. And <clears throat> because this is new, you can see my workflow in Phoenix is now also out of date. So I will just uh, rerun this analysis to make sure this is all uh, updated with using the new uh, source data. <clears throat> and now I've updated my analysis, so I'm going to save again. Now in this version, say previously, <clears throat> I didn't want, I didn't want to uh, import those Lambda Z plots. That was a mistake. So as you can see here, when you, when you are saving your next revision, uh, Integral will remember your previous save option settings. So you can see here, they're, they're already in, in here ready to go, but I don't want this one anymore. So I'm just going to de-click that. And now that should not appear in my save point or experiment folder once I, uh, once I save my results again. So I remove that save option, um, click next, finish, and then add my results. Sign. bring the browser back up and there you go. You can see it's a uh, solid blue and uh, the experiment is now up to date. I'll just demonstrate that real quick by clicking on the history. And thinking one of the main reasons for this, my, my internet is running a bit slow. So that's usually a timeout issue, but um, you can see now that the uh, dependency is using revision two of my source data. And, uh, and then there's all the files, uh, results generated from your experiment or analysis.